picked the wrong weight to quit sniffing glue. Good morning, folks. Welcome back. It's a new week. It's a new model. Always exciting times when you have a new model on your table. And I've been looking forward to getting in my hands dirty on this one for, oh, the last four or five weeks that I've had when I was working on the Bay Enterprise E. I've always had this one in the corner and it was teasing me, taunting me from the sidelines. Come and build me, Lou. Come and build me. Well, today is the day we finally get started on it. This kit is actually two kits, so don't let that fool you. Uh, first off, I need to uh, I need to uh, let you know that this is actually two kits. This is the Delta Flyer and the interior kit for the Delta Flyer from a company called Cosmic Scale Models. And I have to tell you, I am beyond impressed with the presentation of the materials, the quality of the pieces, uh, the instructions, everything. Now, I will tell you, this is a 3D printed kit. And this is not parts cast from a 3D printed master. These are individually 3D printed pieces. Each piece is a first generation, fresh off of the uh, 3D printer piece. Now that's going to come with its own challenges. But what it also gives you is an unsurpassed level of detail. So much so that uh, I'm actually going to do something that I don't normally do. And that is I'm going to start some uh, construction before I prime anything because I do not want to lose any detail under primer paint that you know that could happen if you get a little bit trigger happy with the primer plus the fact that it's not on sprues doesn't give me anything to hold the part to while I am spraying the primer on it I mean I could tack them down to some double stick tape and all that but um, really what I want to do is, is do some sub assembling and then probably what I will do is to uh, spray the primer into the airbrush, you know, decant some into an airbrush and put it on that way. I'm not even sure that I will need a lot of primer on this, but since there are so many translucent parts, that's where I might need the primer for the light blocking. Uh, as I said, this is two separate kits. Uh, the exterior, which is a fine, fine kit on its own. And look at this, Ma. Pins. Locator pins. Imagine my surprise. Look at that. Somebody actually put locator pins in the 3D printed parts. Amazing. And now this is, because of the 3D printed parts, you can expect a little bit of warpage. They are not stable uh, like styrene kit parts are. And that's just the nature of the beast. But this looks like it's going to squeeze together pretty well. I can work out a lot of that warpage. Uh, that's not going to be a problem. Now, I did ask Keith about this issue right here, and uh, I'll tell you what we did about it. This part here, there's a seam line running down through a lot of what I would consider, you know, detail. And I said, Keith, you know, what can we do about that? Can we print just this part as a whole piece? And that way I can cut it out of here, and I won't have to worry about trying to sand inside these indentations. And that's what he did. He actually sent me an STL file of just that part and I have printed my own insert here so that when we get to that part I will be cutting this out and inserting my own piece and because it's the same file there shouldn't be any problem with it not fitting I mean it's it's the same file so uh, let me get the camera up where we can see things a little bit better I was just doing some test fitting and some uh, playing around and the uh, clear parts the uh, for the impulse and the warp engines the, there are, and this is part of the exterior kit, um, these are beautifully red printed parts. These are not, you might be used to seeing these as, uh, you know, clear resin cast pieces, but these are also printed, but they're printed in uh, clear material. I've uh, got the blue pieces in, and I gotta tell you, uh, they're such a tight fit there, I don't think I'm gonna pull them out. I think what I'm gonna do is try to work with them in place. If I have to, I may pull them out, but they're so beautiful that I can get to it and just mask off the outside of it. I'm not really worried about that. I've checked my lighting to make sure I've got enough lighting or enough uh, tiny LEDs to do the job. I'm not going to go completely nuts and try to light each con uh, console because 
the one thing you have to realize is that your parts are smaller than you think they're going to be. Uh, you look at it on the screen or you look at it in, in, in instructions and the uh, the parts, the actual parts are, are tinier than you think. So what you thought you might have had room to light, you might not. So that's another reason why I want to start some construction before I get too far in so I can see, okay, am I going to be able to chase lighting anywhere, chase the wiring? Am I going to be able? Now, Keith, the fine gentleman who, who makes this kit, he provides some lighting assistance. There are some parts here that he's included, like, oh, here you go. He's included spots along the warp, in, along the SARD collector here for, uh, looks like one, uh, one mil LEDs. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm probably not going to use these holes because I have found that a single, a single S surface mount LED placed about mid, placed about in the center here. It's going to be enough. I don't think I need to get two bulbs in there. I think one bulb will do fine. So I think I'm just going to drill a, a third hole in the center and be done with it. But these are, as I've said, they are, they are first generation off the printer uh, printed parts, which means they're going to have, even though they're very well cleaned, they're going to have some uh, pore stubs on them. Or not pore. It would be pore stubs if it was a... a uh, a cast resin piece. What they are is the supports. They are, uh, you know, where the where the printing support attaches to the part. And some of those you might have to find yourself sanding off. You might have a little nubbin of one of those. But luckily, this material sands like a dream. I use a really heavy grit sandpaper on on a sanding block, and then I switch to a lighter, a, a uh, lighter grit, and it just cleans them up beautifully. But uh, they sand up even better than regular resin parts. Look at the detail on that. This is the tiny, tiny, oops, I lost it. This is the tiny, tiny warp core. Look at the detail on that. Let's see if I can see what's going on in there. There you go. That's the tiny, tiny warp core. Um, and there are also extras. Uh, he, he mentions this in the instructions for some of the tiniest parts there are multiples so in case you lose one you are not having a sad day uh, but what I'm doing now is I'm just going around and I'm cleaning off any extra support um, nubbins that I might see getting those cleaned up and then I'll decide which parts I want to be able to build um, they fit like a dream now this is because everything is printed and first generation and all of that but uh, there's nothing really else to say except for to start digging into digging into these parts and uh, putting some stuff together so uh, let's journey to the Delta Quadrant just take a look at the detail on these seats of course these are still on the uh, still on the support so they'll need to be cleaned off but those are beautiful very crisp very clean very nicely printed and there there's actually crew figures too which is a nice change because you sometimes you're stuck trying to find your own figures okay I'm trying to build what walls I can before I have to start painting things and I'm um, just in seeing how the parts are going together now there is some lack of uh, alignment pins on the inside that's no problem though because there are some wonderfully detailed illustrations in the instructions that show you step by step exactly how the parts are supposed to line up so I can forgive you know the odd retaining pin for that sense of clarity and I've also noticed that these 3d printed parts like most most 3d printed parts if you uh, when you're sanding them you don't get the normal sanding sound it actually sounds a bit like like you are uh, running your hands over corduroy pants oh and you can hear that that's enough to drive a person nutty if, if they've got that kind of phobia but uh, uh, I'm just going ahead and uh, throwing some walls down and uh, enjoying myself immensely now it's perfectly normal to run into some parts when you are working with something that has been 3d printed particularly if it is a thin walled thing that it might have been uh, 
cured or or dried um, in in outer shape it might have twisted itself out of shape not too much unlike a resin piece particularly if it's thin walled uh, you can um, warp it back into place and and tack it and you shouldn't be afraid to do that take for instance this wall here you can see that the bottom of the opening is thinner or is skinnier than the top and all I need to do in that case is you know pull it out a little bit put it under a little bit of tension and uh, put this insert in Basically, I can put, I can glue up one wall and then use the insert to square that opening back up. But uh, man, things are going well here. Uh, you can see where there have been there's there are holes here at the top of this clear part or translucent part, so that if you wanted to put a light in there, it would transmit through all of the places that the decals would go, and then you uh, light block over top of that. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm getting down to the point where I'm going to have to start painting some stuff. This is going pretty darn quick. You know, from a 14-week project to this, which is liable to be a, a uh, one- or two-week project, it's quite a quite a, a uh, mental whiplash type of thing. But morning, welcome back. It's Tuesday. It's day two of the uh, Delta Flyer build, and I'm still having a good time with it. Uh, Woke up this morning with a nice little surprise in my inbox and that was that Keith had sent me a file that was the perfect sizing for all of these masks that I was doing for the clear parts. Uh, he, this is now something that he includes in his kit, uh, you know, right out of the box, but didn't have it at the time that, uh, that uh, I got the box from him. So uh, he forwarded it along. And I gotta say, of course, they're gonna fit perfectly because they're designed to fit perfectly. So I um, cut some into black vinyl. Now I use black vinyl when I am doing window masks. You saw that, you saw a million of them on the Enterprise E. And that's because it uh, it's a little bit thinner. It bends over small areas or sharp angles uh, better. It's thinner material. It's got more adhesive on it, which means it's stickier, which is fine. I'm not worried about it pulling up any paint because it's just going down on clear uh, material. And um, because some of these pieces are so small, if they are that small and have, uh, you know, uh, your regular amount of adhesive on the back of them, they may not stick down as well. But because this has a little bit more adhesive on it, they stay down, which is, you know, the only goal. I, the only thing I really ask of them to do is to lay there and take it once I put it down. So uh, I'm putting the masks on the various parts that are clear so that I can paint the top coats over them today. And uh, you can see here is the the top dashboard and I'm adding some additional little little guys here to cover some white gauges and some uh, interior lights and that brings me to today's point I do not think that even though I've got these beautiful masks for the uh, working surfaces and the consoles and all that I do not think that I am going to directly attempt to uh, light those or, or to to light them directly or if you, if you, all the words I meant were in that sentence, you just have to put them in the right order. I do not think that I am going to attempt to directly light them. That was the order they needed to be in. Thank you. Um, not because I can't. It's certainly easy enough to stick SMLEDs under here. It's the blocking of everything else. Uh, these consoles are meant to be, you know, one long, sorry, get in the camera, one long strip along the edge of the wall here and... Uh, in order to block that, I would have to, uh, you know, create a box underneath to capture the light. And that's just going to ruin the look of them. The, this, this nice kit uh, is, is beautifully designed this way. So what I'm going to do is I am going to light the interior lighting, like the ceiling lights. Uh, there are lights that go, like, above some of these inserts, and they're meant to shine down inside these alcoves. Um, best example of that would be... The light that goes over the engineer station um, that is going to have I'm going to be putting the lights in that and in the ceiling area of the car of the uh, the back room <coughs> excuse me all of that I want to, I want to continue to light that uh, but if there is overspill into the consoles then so much the better I am going to continue to block them off 
and then put the decal over it so any light spill will you know light those up a little bit so that's the goal and then we'll see how how far along the path that takes me if i find after i've built the interior that there is room to put lighting in i may add it but for this at this point i'm not planning on it i am planning on dropping a blue smled down the middle of this tiny tiny warp core hold me closer tiny warp core but that is something that I can run the wiring up and out of the, this is the, uh, the wall pieces as they go together. So um, I can run the wiring up and out of the ceiling portion of that. That's where, that's why I am uh, cutting back on my lighting. All of these ceiling panels will be lit, but because I can do the wiring above the ceiling capsule, I can do that. It's, going to be a question of how do I run the lights and all of that wiring if I was you know lighting all all the walls it could turn into a rat's nest of uh, wiring if I'm not careful so going to be very careful with the interior lighting and then I will make sure that I like the warp engines and stuff like that for the for the shell but getting the shell contained or getting the uh, cockpit contained is is an important aspect at this point so I'm starting to paint things as I'm putting them in place. Um, I want to get the last of these black masks down so that I can do a coat of paint over all of the interior stuff. And then I can really start uh, putting it, putting things together. Okay, so I've got some of the uh, parts light blocked and ready to paint. And a lesson learned also from the Enterprise E is to, you know, light block the back of these sometimes. So uh, whereas you see the light blocking here, I've also blocked it on the back so that uh, I can spray the back of this without uh, worrying about uh, covering up the parts I want to keep clear so let me give this a good dousing and uh, we'll see where we go from here so I'm working on the uh, details painting the inside of the cabin I gotta tell you not the sexiest color combination I've ever seen uh, if it ain't brown it's beige and if it ain't brown or beige it's leather colored and if it ain't brown beige or leather colored it's gray um, I know Tom Harris was a big hot rod enthusiast but I think you should have let Neelix uh, pick the colors out because maybe we would have got something a little brighter and more exciting than this it's just oranges or, or oranges brown and then beige and uh, I know it looks good on TV because it makes the actors uh, you know stand out against it but boy howdy it is not a sexy color palette alrighty I'm wrapping for the day you know it's weird I've spent so many weeks painting gray I think I lost my sense of any other color I've been going round and round and round on this thing all day trying to find the right combination of colors and they're all in the brown slash gray and with silver accents uh, realm so it's uh, been a very small palette to choose from but I think I finally got a color combination that I like it's just that every time I find something I like I have to go respray it over top of everything else so uh, I'm gonna let these parts dry overnight come back to them tomorrow and we'll start uh, wiring in stuff I think good morning everybody it is Wednesday uh, it has taken me this long uh, we are half a week into this build it has taken me this long to figure out what my deal is, what my problem with it has been. And it's not a problem with the kit. The kit is wonderful. The problem is, and I find myself painting and repainting and painting over, and it's not like me, and I don't, why, I don't know why, but now I do. Um, for the last 14 weeks, I have been working on this big enterprise build. Well, that's done. And now I'm working on something that is much smaller. And I'm trying to put the same amount of work into this as that project. And it just, uh, it's not appropriate. Um, here's the best analogy I can come up with. I have been building a log cabin with a chainsaw for the last 14 weeks. And now I am working on a Swiss watch with a tiny, tiny screwdriver. And I'm trying to apply the same methods uh, to this uh, Swiss watch that I have been to the 
log cabin, and um, it's just not appropriate. It's causing me to redo things, to overthink things, to uh, really uh, make a hash of it, and I need to stop and recalibrate. That's all there is to it. Uh, so today, I'm finally going to start putting some parts together, and um, I'm going to start wiring up some lighting. And another thing, uh, I mean, I'm all over the place. Granted, the whole ship is about yay big, about the size of uh, a good size grapefruit. But, um, so, you know, when I say I'm all over it, there's not that much all over to be. But uh, I need to uh, start putting some parts together. And I'm going to start with the front console. Now, uh, the front console, and I, I, I think I mentioned yesterday that I've decided not to try to light up every control surface because that's just madness and there's no way to hide the bulbs from underneath. I mean, if you look at this on a real, the real sized prop, the, the set piece, even that, the consoles were maybe, you know, uh, what, inch and a half, two inches thick so they could hide lighting. Uh, not so easy in this case. Let's uh, let's do a maybe a little bit more friendly angle here um, So where I'm going to start with I'm going to start with Lighting up the front console now. I'm not as I said I'm not trying to light all the surfaces, but there are two lights in the corners right it, well there, There's a light here and a light here on these two corners and um, of course this whole piece is printed in a clear um, you know translucent uh, resin so what I've done is I've you know opened up opened up an area from the bottom and let me get the bulb out here and show you what's happening so basically what I am going to do is take two of these little tiny nano uh, SM LEDs stuff them up in the corners here I've already cut them out from the belt from the uh, from the underside and uh, that's going to give me my corner lights now of course I've got the the front lens part um, light blocked or I've got a piece of vinyl over top of it to cover the area that I want to keep clean but this is going to help me figure out uh, how much more how many, how many more coats of paint I'm going to need and I'm also doing some fitting I'm looking at uh, once everything is together, how much room do I have? How much ceiling room do I have between the ceiling of the kit part and the interior of the shuttle that it's or the shell of the Delta Flyer that it's going into? So I don't want to get overly ambitious and find out I don't have any ceiling room to run any wiring. I've cut two additional holes in the bottom here so that once I get these console uh, bulbs in, I can sink the whole thing down. So let's get out the uh, let's get the CA out and start gluing in some bulbs. Alrighty, the consoles are in. I've got the uh, I've got the little covers taken off of the the paint mask taken off of the front corner lights. Hopefully you can see that. If you can't, I'll bring it closer to the camera. But basically, there's just a little corner light here and a corner light over here. And uh, I can see now where I need to touch up and light block around them. The uh, what I'm hoping for is some accidental light spill that will also go into lighting up some of these consoles. But I'm not counting on it. But if it happens, uh, I will be happy and say wonderful things about it. The uh, tiny side monitors I'm using the they're cast or they're printed in clear. And I'm uh, hoping that they uh, will act as little light pipes and uh, stick down into the clear bits and transfer some some light to the decal that will be um, in front of them. So uh, that's kind of working out the way I want. So now, uh, now that that's in, I can go around and touch some paint to it. So there's this weird feature at the back of the, uh, in the rear cabin of the Delta Flyer that is basically a cage. They call it a cargo cage, but uh, um, it's just a strange bit of partition. And uh, in the kit, we are provided with this lovely printed uh, piece of acetate that's got, uh, it's got a cage uh, or a grid pattern printed on it. This is very nice. I'm not going to use it, but it's very nice. What I decided to use instead was actually to cut out a piece of this um, screening 
It's, it's a screen replacement. Actually, no, this is actually part of a screen. I uh, sacrificed an old house screen and have been chopping on it for years now to use. And it's the same. It is the uh, the same uh, scale and texture as this printed piece. But uh, I opted to use an actual piece because I think it gives it just a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to very uh, carefully... Uh, drop some CA on the inside of this framework just in a few key spots and then push the uh, the, gr the uh, grid down into it and uh, like I said I'm bouncing from forward to back and uh, I'm trying to uh, see which parts of this I want to work on next I think uh, the tricky thing about this piece here is it's got this tiny warp core in it that I need to decide whether I'm going to try to light from the bottom or whether I'm going to try to light from the top. Uh, it would be easy to uh, it would be easy to do either, but I'm just trying to figure out which would be the most effective use of space. I think if I drilled straight down, straight down through the floor, I can run the wire out through the the floor and meet up with the uh, the two wires that I have done from the the front console and that'll help separate it from all of the ceiling uh, lighting that's going to go over particularly over this back area there's uh, ceiling panels and I don't want to get that area too congested because there's limited space but there seems to be an okay amount of space underneath between the floor and the floor of the flyer we oh, say that five times fast the floor and the floor of the flyer to get that to, to fit uh, functionally. There, I tried to put all my uh, F alliterations in one place. See, even the compressor approves. Here we have the world's tiniest warp core. Um, these nano LEDs fit perfectly just up inside this tube. Boy, it makes me wish I had one of those animated uh, circuits where I could go, you know, do a sequence on it, but that might be over, that might be gilding the lily, that might be a little bit too much for this tiny model. Um, maybe if it were something bigger it might, uh, that might do, but that's going to work fine I think. And it's going to be buried back here on the, on the uh, engineer's uh, workstation tabletop. It's like your tabletop warp core. And now I'm second guessing whether or not I want to wire that from the top or not because that would save me a lot of hussing and fussing to uh, because it's not the it's not the size of the LED it's the size of the resistor you actually have to make the hole larger than the LED because the resistor on it is larger than the bulb itself so I'll have to double check my rationale there before I decide whether or not I want to go down through the top Okay, it's kind of an odd truth about this kit that it forces you to uh, do decaling kind of early in the process. I mean, it's uh, I mean it's the nature of the beast, but this is how it works. Um, I'm used to you know building a lot, painting a lot, and then putting the decals down, and that's certainly true on the exterior of a, of a ship, but on this interior. I have to put decals, or you, not I, everybody is, it is the way the model is designed. You need to put the decals in this area where the cage goes before you even put the cage uh, front on. There are decals on this back wall and on this inside side wall. And of course, this is around about the time you start wondering about how much of any of this is ever going to be seen. Once you uh, have got everything, you know, carefully ensconced inside the uh, inside the uh, shell of the kit, how much of this is ever going to be seen? Well, there's a big old hatch that opens right off the back here, so you're going to see a fair amount of this back room and uh, into this hallway here. So that's why I chose the open door. Uh, um, well, this this wall has an open door on it. There's another corridor here that you can choose to leave the door open um, so that you can get some light passing through from the back. And I'm going to leave that open as well. But 
there's a lot of detail in here that you may never see if uh, you close the whole thing up so I'm wondering how much detail to worry about and how much uh, to how much I can leave off well I've decided you know simple as answers just to go ahead and put it all in and uh, you know if you don't see it then you don't see it but you don't want to have closed it up and then see this one glaring empty wall where it really would have been nice to uh, have had the detail there um, I'm just kind of pacing all these walls together and it's coming together real nicely and this is what it looks like once the roof is down now there are ceiling lights that will also light up this room so that's going to help as well uh, but you you uh, you look at the various angles on this and you say okay I am probably not going to see a lot of these decals that are going in but what the heck let's do it it's good practice it's going to be attractive and if they don't get seen well at least you and I know they're in there I am having the best time with these decals and it may be just because I'm coming off of the uh, Enterprise E decals but I only ask decals to do two things I ask them to fit in the area that they are supposed to fit in and I ask them to slide off of the sheet without fighting me and uh, these decals are doing both now it's entirely possible that's because these are very fresh decals this whole model kit is not that old so the decals are going to be a lot more fresh than the old Enterprise E decals that were you know God knows how old when I got them so uh, that's all well and good but these things are sliding off particularly for and I'm gonna use the term homemade decals because they are not commercially printed they were uh, they have the demon carrier film where you know you have to cut very close to the decal and cut them cut them out to size but uh, they have been sliding off and I, now granted I have been using the larger ones to start with but these guys are going down like champs there's one there I don't know whether you can see this whole back wall here this was one big honking decal and that's going down like gangbusters now I did I did spray the wall in the area of the decals are going with this gloss varnish the Vallejo gloss varnish and I will um, put a flat varnish over them after I'm done with the exception of the control surfaces because it's those glossy black uh, uh, control surfaces so what I'm probably going to do is just brush over I will spray the whole thing flat to kind of seal the decal in but then I'll probably take a, a very small brush with some uh, of the clear or the gloss varnish and just gloss over top of just the area where the Elkars uh, panels are so I've gotten those big guys down and it's uh, to the point where I need to start decorating things like the warp core and uh, these other um, these other controls. So I'm going to go back in, see if I can put those side walls in. Those are fun. These are the ones that have the uh, what I call the honeybee uh, the, the the warning stripes on them, the black and yellow warning stripes. So I'm going to put those down. You know, Lord knows you'll probably never see them because of how the ship is laid out, but what the heck it's good practice if nothing else okay so I am working on the decals on the back uh, cargo area consoles and this is really uh, encouraging me to want to find a way to light these back walls because those decals are coming up quite nice and there you can see the little warning signs from the side the, um, so I'm going to, once I get the console or get this whole cargo area uh, built and put together, I will look at seeing what my ex my exterior clearances are going to be between the uh, cargo area and the shell. So if I have room to uh, light those indirectly, then I will. Okay, I've got one side of the uh, decals down on the. I guess would be the uh, port console Whether how well you can see those they're laying down I'm gonna let the uh, solve set do their uh, I'm sorry the micro set do the do its job and suck that down I got one more decal I could put on this side and that will finish up the whole left hand side of the 
ship so let's go ahead and do that one and then um, like I said we'll come back to it after these have had a chance to dry I don't want to uh, be stepping on top of myself I'm no, not in any particular rush I think if I can get the interior done this week and then that would leave me next week to do the exterior that would be a uh, a respectable amount of time to spend on this kit. I don't uh, want to shortchange it. I don't want to rush through it. I can do it justice in a couple of weeks. Then that's what I'm going to do. So let me get this last one trimmed up. This is when the tweezers come in handy because see again this is the deal with the uh, carrier paper. You got to trim these as close as close to the uh, image as possible. And if you want a guide, you just look at your regular decal sheet, and you see how much carrier film uh, surrounds your image, and that'll give you a good uh, rule of thumb for how much you should trim these out. I try not to cut into the ink because sometimes that will cause the ink to run. And that's that's no bueno. So uh, I like to, I'd rather err on the side of too much rather than too little. Okay, this little guy is a uh, wall light that just goes uh, back over the engineer's uh, console, and of course there will be a uh, alcove over top of it that will help direct that, but. Uh, it's going to sit something like that. Wondering now if I shouldn't have used a warm LED there rather than a cool, but it's done. That'll be something that'll help light up the back of the uh, cabin once the whole cabin is uh, ensconced in the interior of the ship. Uh, there's, let's see, there's a light here. I'm debating there should be a light over this console for the, I guess that's a replicator. Uh, there's a light there for that pad. And then, of course, there is the uh, hold me closer tiny warp core that goes there. So let's uh, put this in place and mark out where I need to cut a hole in the floor to run that wire. Okay, so we're getting into early evening now and I'm shutting down for the day, but I've got all of the console decals down. See if I can zoom in on this. You can see all the console decals are down. This side I've had a flat coat put over. This side I have not yet. Once, uh, I think tomorrow morning what I'll do is I'll come back in and use the gloss clear and just brush over those exact uh, bits of the console. But that's done and also the smaller engineer's section has had its decals put on and I think I will be oh also the uh, warp core has had its last two sides put on so I'll be ready to start doing that kind of construction tomorrow good morning everybody it's Thursday it's the gateway to the weekend and uh, we're gonna continue work on the uh, Delta Flyer today working on the interior details <clears throat> excuse me this morning I got up early and I put a coat of the Tamiya Clear over all of the control surfaces and they, they, they look nice and glossy now. I don't know how much light spill we're going to get into those, but we'll see and then we'll know. Um, got the light on the wall here. I've got, I've got to put the light underneath the stairwell here and then we can continue work on the back, uh, the back cabin here. Once the back cabin exterior walls are up, which are these guys, and you can see I've put the, maybe you can tell, uh, see the glint, there you go, you can get the reflection. I put the, the clear over the decals on those as well. But once we get these in place uh, and get this closed up, we'll get this roof on it, and I can start working on the lighting that's going to be coming down from the roof, the ceiling lighting. Uh, we'll uh, kind of test fit it inside the uh, shell, and we'll see how much perimeter wall space we've got 
so I can maybe think about adding some light that's going to be shining in from the ex from the exterior of the shell and that will help uh, hopefully I'll help at least this back end I don't know how much we're going to be able to add to the front as far as lighting up those uh, consoles but one of the things I did yesterday is to uh, get the decals on the hold me closer tiny warp core and the tiny warp core I cleared I put the clear over the decals this morning it looks great I'm ready to uh, glue it down to the engineering console once that is done then I can glue this whole wall in place and that will just start a cascade effect well it, that will allow me to put the other walls in so uh, let's get to that and uh, stop talking about it and get to doing it alrighty starting to come together uh, got starting to put some light blocking foil on here just under some of the obvious joints that didn't quite meet up but here you can see the uh, the, uh, the back cargo area is uh, all ready to get buttoned up I wanted to before I put the roof on it I wanted to get some shots inside there so you can see all the hard work that'll probably be covered up and never seen again uh, that is the clear bits of that uh, that wall and uh, the clear bits on that wall and the cage in there and I don't think I've uh, pointed it out yet but the uh, bio bed there I put a light in the end of the bio bed that shines back towards the wall so we'll see how that goes I've got the light under the stairs now and once I put the ceiling on here I will connect up all the wiring and show you how the uh, the cabin looks all lit up and then I will decide uh, how to best do the ceiling lights welcome back kids to my own little pocket of the Delta Quadrant it is Friday it is the last work day of the week and we are going to finish up at least the interior of the Delta Flyer today uh, my goal is to get this thing buttoned up and get it ready to um, be enclosed into the uh, shell of the Delta Flyer which will be next week's project but this is one of those instances where you have to have your entire interior and that's your alliteration for the week your entire interior you have to have the, the whole enchilada the, the big megillah you have to have all of that done before you close up the two pieces of the shell around it there is no other way around that particular uh, bugaboo now if I were a oh I don't know if I were in perhaps a more intrepid modeler um, you know you could be persuaded maybe if you cut the bottom of the shell out and then put the whole entire shell together except for this bottom piece and then slide your interior up into it and then put the put the uh, bottom on that might be a way to go and um, if I had another shell to practice on maybe I would do that but the only way it seems to work these days is if you have your side shell and you slide your interior in it and that's this is going to do one thing for me now and it's going to show me how much of a uh, gap I'm going to have around the inside when it comes to doing um, lighting and uh, wire chase and things like that so it looks like I'm going to have adequate space up here to run my ceiling lighting and um, still get this, you know, still get it wedged in there just right. The other thing that woke me up at night was figuring out how to um, run the wiring out of this beast since there is no room uh, and I have no desire to run batteries in here anywhere. Uh, I am stuck with how do I run the wiring out of this and still... Uh, make it something that I can make a nice little display out of and then it struck me It struck me uh, that I should run it out of one of the feet the landing gear See here you have the landing gear bay Here you have a landing gear bay and you have the two supports for the landing gear Well uh, in the kit are these two wonderful brass tubes for the landing gear Well, what do you know they fit right in there and I'm thinking what I need to do is cut a hole in the uh, access area here in this landing uh, landing gear bay cut a hole through there run it through the brass tube and out the foot so if I can run the wiring out the foot then I can run it down into a base into a switch into a power source 
and uh, all is healthy and good. So what I'd like to do today is get again get the shell off the off of the uh, off of the table for right now. But I want to finish up this interior so that it's ready to go. And we're very close to that point now. I just need to, like I said, to uh, to apply the um, the ceiling lighting here. I'm thinking of trying to do some sort of box around the outside that I, that will allow me to light this and uh, do something similar on this side. Put the people in their little tiny chairs and we will be good to go. And I was painting the people this morning, doing a little bit of people painting. And I've got uh, the uh, pilot, which is not quite Tom Paris, but you know, it's not too far off. Um, he's ready to go. I've got the engineer who's not quite Bellana Torres, but close enough. She's ready to go. And then I've got these other two uh, miscellaneous crewmen who um, don't really have any good analogs. They're not uh, partic particularly recognizable as any, uh, any of the cast from the show. So um, let's finish up the uh let's see i've got these two consoles that go on either side of the pilot station got to get those in get the decals on them and i think i'm going to try using the white back to decals on that and then it's a question of getting the chairs in and the ceiling lighting so let's uh quit yammering and start building yeah i've had to do a little bit of amputation a little bit of surgery uh i noticed that uh when i was trying to fit the pilot down into the seat that it wasn't sitting all the way down in and I don't know whether it's because I've chosen the wrong figure or what but the problem the upshot of that is when I put the canopy piece over his little wee noggin sticks out or is way too close to the uh, the main view screen window now I know that that sits up a little bit because of the hole the hole that has to go in here so when I do that, I want to make sure that uh, the head of the pilot does not uh, stick up too much. So I think I'm going to have to sand down his hips a bit so that he sits further down into his chair. Hey, I've got the, uh, this is not glued down, but I've got the, all of the characters in, the pilots, the co-pilots, the science officers, the engineer, and all that. Uh, and everybody is clearing the uh, plane of the windows, so that's good. Uh, I've got this last alcove wall glued in. Uh, I'm just doing a little bit of foil wrapping around the seams here because they're not, I mean, they're clean. They're not as, you know, they're not airtight. They're not waterproof. They're not light proof. So I'm uh, just taking little strips of the, uh, of the silver tape and just taping over that so you don't see the cracks. I mean, the thing about the, uh, the Delta Flyer is that it is it is so moody and is dark inside. It is not a uh, antiseptic bridge, you know, where everything is white and clean and bright and shiny. This is a dark vehicle, and that's that's kind of uh, frustrating when it comes to lighting it appropriately. Um, I wish I could have gotten the lights under the consoles the way I wanted to but if I had done that it would have spilled over the light over the floor and that's not the look I was going that's not the look I was going for so uh, let's see what happens when we put a battery to all of this I've got everything down that I've gotten done so far down to two wires let me let me connect those up okay let's see I've got the lights on and uh, you see what's going on in here now. Of course, you can see the console lights back in engineering. Uh, you can see the uh, front deck lights. And uh, that's throwing some light on the other consoles. So that's looking good. And when we see what's going on back here, we see the light that's under the steps. That's kind of blaring. And then we've got the light from the bio bed, which is shining up on that entire wall. That's lighting up that cage. And now I'm just left with uh, how I'm going to light the ceiling. Okay, I'm happy with my uh, front forward cab lighting, or forward cabin lighting. And what I'm working on now is the ceiling panels for back here. And what I've done is I've just taken some strip lighting and uh, 
glued it down in the shape of an L and uh, that will go sits right on top it keeps the bulbs a little bit away from these spacers here keep the bulbs a little bit away from sitting right on top of these windows I gotta tell you Keith the uh, material that you supply for these windows or for these overhead uh, ceiling lights a little too thick a little too diffuse for my taste this is what comes with it it's a it's a uh, plasticky paper but it blocks too much light I've got a really thin sheet styrene that's uh, a little bit more um, friendly to uh, the overhead lighting so I've cut those pieces out and put stuck them in there I did try your stuff out first I just felt that it blocked too much of the light even with the LED sitting right on top of it it just uh, it, it diffused it a little too much just to, just too much for my taste not uh, not to say that uh, you know somebody else might like that it's just what I chose to do so uh, what I would like to do the last thing I need to do before I'm ready to, to call this finished pretty much is to uh, figure out how I'm going to do I think what I'd like to do is a nice curve uh, I've got these short lengths of uh, I've got these short lengths of, uh, of the SM LEDs that I cut for the Enterprise E that I didn't use that are going to come in very handy here I think uh, just to make little half semicircles. Uh, well, let me get this ready. Get the camera so everybody can see it. There you go. Okay, so a little semicircle here that I can put on each uh, side wall, and I think um, I think I can get away with a single single segment in there. Just a little bowy thing that I can stick there on both sides and that'll light up the uh, half walls and here's where we're gonna finish it up for the week I've got all of the lighting done for the inside yay uh, I've a tiny touch of, of wire tidying to do but uh, by and large I'm happy with all of this um, I'll take the camera off of the tripod in a second here I don't want to move this around because it's kind of delicate but I want to show you uh, how the lighting looks. Let's put this down in, for, in front of it first. That's how it's going to look with the uh, uh, from the outside with the uh, canopy in place. So let me do a color balance, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back with the uh, color balance having been repaired. Now you are getting an overall blue glow and that's coming from that warp core in the back. And it's a lot brighter on camera than it is in real life. But we've got a uh, pilot there you can see. We've got um, the engineering section in the back. And then we need to spin this whole thing around so that you can see how the cargo area looks. Now once I put you know the regulated nine volts on it and not the weak battery that I had been using it did get a lot brighter so uh, let me turn this around hold us hold the phone there I needed to raise it up a bit so that I could get the camera at a good angle but let me uh, block these which you won't see and then you can see the, uh, the very nice lit up back room There you go. All that lovely, lovely detail in there. And again, I'm trying to carefully make sure these two wires don't touch. But if we take this off, then you can see the uh, lighting into the back hallway there. It's a shame I can't get the consoles to light up, but you know, that might be just a little too much. There's one last shot up the back side. So you can see that back cabin. Uh, and now the job next week will be to, of course, get this all uh, <laughs> contained inside. And that was week one on the uh, Delta Flyer from 
cosmic scale models. Um, this is, like I said, I've said this earlier and I'll repeat it now. It is a 180 degree shift from uh, what I had been working on before. And it, once I got my mind wrapped around it, it, uh, it was quite relaxing actually. Um, this looks like, you know, niddly, tedious work, but um, when you only have, you know, this square, this, you know, this cubic volume to work in, all of your world is concerned with right there and uh, you are limited, which is sometimes very, you know, it can be limited, can be liberating because there's only so much you can do. So your, your mind mentally gets to shut off all the other things that you could be or that you want to do, but you physically can't. So we have, after the end of one week, we have an interior. Now the job next week will be to ensconce this interior into the shell and get the uh, lighting done on the shell. So I have everything down to two wires here. And I think my breakthrough uh, this week of figuring out how to wire down through the landing gear and out to the base was, uh, you know, there's always, there's always a uh, uh, stumbling block. And that, that once that stumbling block was taken out, then the rest of the work kind of uh, flowed naturally from that point. So uh, join us next week when we'll be working on the exterior, getting the shell put in. I can already tell you, Keith, I know that you, you strove for authenticity and detail, but those tiny little monitors that go on either side of the pilot's uh, cockpit, I don't know if those are going to survive by the time you get the roof down and everything else around it. I don't know. I've already lost the decals from them, so I will have to... Uh, Thank you for including extras, by the way. That's all I can say about that. But uh, until uh, next week when I figure out whether or not those are going to go in, um, I might have to just touch some paint to the, to the front of those to simulate those uh, um, decals. So, um, like I said, this is it. This is week one. So join us next week when we'll be wrapping up week two. And uh, until then, you be good. You be good to each other. Be safe. Be smart. Uh, enjoy yourself, have a good week, and we'll see you here next time.